Hey guys, this is Phil and welcome to another video. Banggood.com asked me to review the MeGoPad T05. Now this is a Intel compute stick, basically a complete PC running Windows 10 and in an extremely small form factor, small enough to fit into your pocket. With such product reviews, I'll try very hard to make it as interesting and relevant to this channel as possible. So we will check out a bunch of retro games and how they run on this device. We will have a look at Windows games, console emulators, DOSBox, how it handles sound fonts and the MUNT MT32 emulator. Because you can do so much more than just gaming with this device, we will also have a look at multimedia, especially how it handles YouTube, Netflix, local video files and how it copes with running Microsoft Office. Let's have a look at some Windows games. So we got Quake 2 running at 1280 by 1024 and this is very playable, just over 80 FPS. And I've installed the unofficial patch because otherwise the game wouldn't actually start in Windows 10. The Mego Pad T05 comes with an Intel Atom Z3735F CPU, which has a base clock speed of 1.33 GHz and can turbo up to 1.83 GHz. It has four cores. There's also an Intel HD graphics card. It comes with 2 GB of RAM, 32 GB of eMMC storage, and pre installed Windows 10 Home. A quick overview of the unit, on one side we've got a USB port, there's a headphone port for analog audio and also a micro USB connector for the supplied power supply. On the other side we've got another USB port and a micro SD card slot and you can install a micro SD card with a capacity of up to 64 gigabytes. Then we've got the HDMI connector which is for digital video as well as digital audio. Same goes for Return to Castle Wolfenstein, 1280 by 1024 very playable and also once again I used an unofficial patch to make it run smoother under Windows 10. Inside the box we've got the actual unit, we also get a charger which is basically a phone charger. It's rated at 2 amps on the USB port. We get a USB to micro USB cable and because I'm from Australia they also included a local adapter. Now note that the device is quite wide so you might have to use a HDMI extension lead to connect it into your television. I'm using a monitor, it doesn't even have any HDMI so I'm just using a DVI to HDMI adapter instead. Hitman 2 is another game that runs really well, also at the 1280 x 1024 resolution. Hold the power button down for a few seconds, the machine will start booting and a red power LED will light up. The unit has a little fan inside but it's very quiet. If you're listening to some music or playing a game with some sound effects, I'd be very surprised if you can actually hear it. You're in a red shirt. I suggest you grab some body armor and cover it or you'll be easily spotted. Newer games are a little bit harder to get the run smooth on this device. For example, we've got Far Cry here running at 1280 by 1024 with medium details and it does run okay most of the time, but outside in the jungle the FPS do drop. We have a few benchmark results. In 3 d Mark 2001 we're getting 6 1368, in 3D Mark 03, 4108, and in Aquamark 3 we're getting 26,070. I did some benchmarks on the 32GB storage. We have some results for ATTO disk benchmark as well as Crystal 
disk mark. Now in regards to the storage, I actually didn't have any issues with available storage. However, after the Windows anniversary update, there was almost no space available. So what you need to do at this point is do a disk cleanup and delete the previous installation files. This actually freed up almost 10 gigabytes when I did the installation. Total Annihilation. Now this game runs at the full 1920 by 1080 and runs perfectly. For retro gaming, having access to display scaling options and aspect ratio controls is always nice to have. In the driver, there are some limited options, but it's enough for us to get by. For example, we can configure a one by one pixel mapping. That means you have some black borders around your screen, but the pixels remain clear and sharp. And you can also configure the video card to output the native resolution and then your monitor does the scaling. The unit has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi standard is 802.11n. And in my house, I've tested it on the far end where usually I have weak signal, but the signal strength was actually very good. And in terms of speed, I got stable 50 to 60 megabits per second. So that's enough to stream high definition video without any interruptions. MeGoPad does have a support web page with specifications, drivers and a BIOS ready for downloading. I'll put the link down below in the description. The supplied power supply is rated at 5 volts and 2 amps, which gives it a maximum power rating of 10 watt. However, I have a power measurement device and under idle it draws around 3.3 watts and when running benchmarks. Usually I got a reading between 6 and 7 watts with a peak power draw of 8.4 watts. So basically this is a very power efficient device. Affirmative Captain. DOSBox runs really well on this machine as long as you stick with older games. For example, here we have Wing Commander 2 and that game runs really well. We are actually using the Roland Munt MT32 emulator and that works also very good. Another game that uses Roland MT32 music and sounds really fantastic is Monkey Island 2 and this game also runs really well on this machine. Doom also runs great. This one supports general MIDI and I'm using virtual MIDI synth to load a general MIDI sound font. Higher resolution games such as Screamer 2 however, they do struggle on this machine. So my advice is in regards to DOSBox, stick with the older 386 and 486 games. They should run really well on this device. Let's have a look at performance watching YouTube. Now, what is important with this device is you need to pick the right browser. Google Chrome doesn't really work well on this device. At 1080p videos and, and 60fps, we're getting 100% load. However, switching to Microsoft Edge and the load goes down to 50%. So whatever Microsoft did with the Edge browser, it seems to be more optimized for the Intel Atom CPU. Netflix also runs well on this machine. Once again, I'm using the Microsoft Edge browser and we're running Lost here at 1080p and CPU usage is very low, around 20%, with a few jumps up to 40. Let's have a look at some console emulation. I'm using RetroArch. And the bottom line is that games that use 2D graphics and are from the 8-bit or 16-bit era, they should work fine 
So for example, we've got some Super Nintendo gaming footage here and also games on the Mega Drive or the Master System, they also work fine. Newer consoles like the Sony PlayStation are a little bit too tough for the machine. We can see Ridge Racer here and it really struggles, the sound slows down. So best to stick with the older two-dimensional 8-bit and 16-bit consoles. Playing back local video files also works great. I'm using Media Player and this is a 1080p 60fps file in the H.264 video format and the CPU usage is also very low. And I had a quick look at running Microsoft Office, in particular Microsoft PowerPoint. So here I'm just mucking around and adding a bit of content and I'm positively surprised how responsive it is. Um, from the moment when you launch a PowerPoint to entering information and adding styles, everything is really responsive and quick. So I was positively surprised. In terms of pricing, you're looking at 80 US dollars. If you're from another region, just go to the website and change the currency. It will tell you how much it costs. Shipping is free, but can take a few weeks. If you want it faster, for another $4, you can order it with priority mail. The device is also backed by a 12 month warranty. So let's wrap it up. This device is awesome value, $80 and lots of retro fun. Now, Focus is definitely on older games. DOSBox games like Wing Command and Monkey Island, they should work well. Same goes for early Windows games such as Return to Castle, Wolfenstein, Hitman 2 or Total Annihilation. Arcade and console emulators, as long as you're sticking with 2D games from the 8 and 16-bit era, you should also be fine. Later DOS games, later Windows games and 3D emulated games, they are a little bit too demanding for this machine. Apart from gaming, I was really surprised how responsive and snappy this device felt. It works really good with media, be it watching YouTube or Netflix or streaming local video files. The GPU seems to do all the video acceleration and, and takes work away from the processor. It also handles itself really well with browsing the internet, Facebook, YouTube and other web pages. But I do recommend that you try out a few browsers. I found uh, Microsoft Edge to be a lot faster for media as well as browsing compared to Google Chrome, which is the browser I usually use. The device is also extremely power efficient. At idle it draws only around 3 watts and under load the maximum I saw was around 8 watts. So this could be used as a desktop replacement if you're on a budget or you can make a kiosk out of it or if you're traveling a lot in hotels you can just plug it into the TV and off you go. And that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in purchasing this device I'll put some links down below in the description. As always eager to hear from you leave me some comments down below. Otherwise I'll see you soon with another video.